evening, audience. So happy to be here this uh, closing evening of our service this year in, in the, this lovely country that I love with all my heart, America. I think of our forefathers from the same long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. I'm so thankful to go to other nations to represent a nation like this, America, where we have freedom of religion and we can speak as as we feel led of the Spirit of God to speak. And I'm happy that to feel the call of the gospel that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has called me to go to other countries to minister to them. I shall always, in my journey, remember this last night. Remember New York. Remember all you people. You've been so kind to us this short stay we've had. I trust that someday you'll permit me to come back to, to be with you again. And, and thank you. I've, all my life, I've cherished friends. There's nothing I love like people, and I wanted people to love me. And in the younger days, I did not have very many friends. I was more or less, well, I, as a boy, not smoking and dancing and so forth, why people thought I was a sissy, my friends. And later on in my church, when I was converted a few years ago, I seen the gospel as the power of God, and I was a fanatic and to them. And then later, when I found there was a group who believed me and accepted me as their brother, I'm certainly thankful that God has placed me with you. And now, I thank each one of you a few moments ago when you were singing, For You I Am Praying. That's what I want you to do. It's, it's prayer that I depend on. That's the secret of all the mysteries of God. That's the key that opens the door to everything of God, is prayer. If you pray and believe, when you pray, then believe that you receive what you ask for, and God will make it known. A minister called me a while ago from down in Louisiana. He got all mixed up and had left his church because of someone calling him out. He said, Brother Branham, I'd just like to know. He said, they told me I was a something another in a church and said, I've left my church and I don't know what to do now. I said, I would advise you go right back to your church again. God isn't calling people out of their churches. He's calling them to Him, to Himself, to unite us together. You know, at one time, the full gospel people were considered a bunch of fanatics. We lived in in the alley, anywhere that we could get a place to preach. And but now the Samson's hairs grown out. It's become united together. When they were broken up in different denominations and had uh, religious prejudice, well, God could not deal with the people. But now when that middle wall is broken down and we've come together as one unit, it's the most mighty church on the face of the earth. And you know, most all famous pictures, before they're hung in the Hall of Fame, they have to go through the Hall of Critics first and has to pass the critics. Then when it passes the critics, then it can be hung in the Hall of Fame. And I think that's our little church. It's passed through every criticism, been called every black and ugly name. But I think God's going to hang it in the Hall of Fame one of these mornings. He's going to take it up. And I, I want to be with them when they go. Don't forget to pray for me. And when you're, when you're praying, and whoever you think of me, sing only believe. Well, yeah, that's a, my favorite song. It's a, Paul Rader wrote that song. Paul Rader was a friend of mine. And I just come into the church one night. It was being played. I didn't even know that he wrote the song. And right immediately after the angel of the Lord had visited me, 
and something has struck me. And ever since then, it's been the campaign theme song, Only Believe. If I shall go and have to be buried before Jesus comes, it's arranged that when I go down beneath the dirt, why, that they're going to sing, Only Believe. All things are possible. If you hear of me going, that hour, will you just stop somewhere and remember me? Hum to yourself, only believe, or I believe that someday I shall come out again. We're going towards a dark chamber, a chamber of death. Everyone enters that chamber, and every time our heart beats, we go one step closer. Someday I shall enter that chamber. And when I get down to the last heartbeat, I do not want to go in there as a coward. I want to wrap myself in his righteousness, pull it up around me and enter that chamber to know him in the power of his resurrection. And when the, the angel screams forth, the voice, the trumpet sounds, I want to come out from among the dead. I hope to see you all there. How I would like to take each one tonight, sit down and talk to you for hours. That's almost impossible for me to do that. But I will make an appointment with you, and by grace of God, I'll keep it. If you make it with me, someday when it's over, let's sit down by the rivers of life over there, where we just talk a thousand years at each one of us, just talk over the old things. I believe it's going to be there. I believe it's going to be real, just as the Bible says it is. And I. We won't have no less time, and when I get through talking to all, we'll just have the same amount of time. It'll be a glorious time, and we're trying hard, struggling to get to that place. I, not to take up much of your time, but I, just before leaving here, I'd just like to say a few words. I was just thinking a few moments ago when I come up to some of my friends here from Arkansas and different parts of the country has come in to say goodbye to us tomorrow. And I'm certainly thankful for that. I see a young lady over here at the piano who was just in a meeting and where I was preaching or trying to preach. I'm not a preacher, but I, uh, she received the baptism of the Spirit in the, in the service. And so I was glad to see her. And Brother Moore just told me there were several here from different parts of the country. And we're thankful for that. Hope to be back someday with you all again. Now, over in the book of St. Luke, the second chapter, uh, I wish just to read a few words. I was aiming to come a little early and speak just a little more, but I, I believe that we must read the Word of God each service. See, my words will fail as all mortals, but God's Word cannot fail. It's for everlasting truth. And just for a short time, to speak to you before forming the prayer line. St. Luke, the second chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. When I look down upon the Bible, I have a small print here, Schofield Bible, while you all are turning to the chapter. It makes me feel so happy to see the Bible and to be able to read. One time I was practically blind. They had to lead me around. My eyesight was gone. I wore great thick glasses. And one moment's time, my eyes changed from blindness to sight. And I can, my eyes test 20-20, and I can read newspaper print five feet from me. And that's grace of God that did that. If the whole world doubted it, I would still believe it with all my heart. If I would pray for 10,000 people overseas or here, and all 10,000 would die. A moment after I prayed for them, I'd still say divine healing was right. It's the Word of God. And if I preached to 10,000 and they all died, and they were dead for 20 years and returned back and said, there is no Jesus. There is, there is no such a thing as God. There is no eternity. And Jesus wasn't the Son of God. And I was dying. I'd say, let me go in him. I take my part. No matter what anyone else would say, I believe him with all my heart. That's right. I believe him. In the 25th verse we read, The adoration of the prophecy of Simeon. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, 
waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parent brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. Now we bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come into thy presence now, dedicating ourselves in this building and all that's in here for your service tonight, realizing that this may be the last time that some here will ever hear the gospel or be privileged to be in church anymore. And this may prove the eternal destination of their being. So help us, Father, tonight to be very reverent and to be very loyal to the gospel and to the call that thou hast called us into this world. And I thank thee, Father, tonight for the privilege that I have to stand before this audience of people. I've often thought how I would cherish in my hands a charger that held one drop of the blood of thy son. But I realize tonight I hold greater in his estimation. Before me is the purchase of his blood, that he gave his blood that these might become his. And Father, it's my lot tonight to speak to these people, so may thy spirit direct every word. And how we thank thee for the grace of God, to know that one time we were aliens cut off from God without mercy, without hope. Christ died for us in our stead, bearing our reproach and sins in his own body, and knowing someday that he shall come. We do not know now what we shall be like, but we know we'll have a body like his, for we shall see him as he is. Father, that will be a glorified body, free from sickness and sorrow and heartaches and death. Oh, our spirits groan for that deliverance. And help us tonight, Father, as we are journeying on now, knowing that Thou hast provided a way that the sick could be healed and the lost could be saved. And as we are gathered here as eternity-bound mortals, Help us to set our affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Grant it, Father, and may the angel of God who has guided me through my life, fed me since I was born, be here tonight to heal the sick and the afflicted. For we ask that in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. Just for a little text, if I should call it that. I want to speak for a moment or two on the word of expectation. We always get what we expect. When people expect anything, well, then they usually get what you look for. It's the mental attitude that you have. Remember this and never forget it. The right mental attitude towards any promise of God will bring it to pass. The right mental attitude towards any promise of God. It doesn't take gifts of healing to heal sick people. Any person in here has a right to meet Satan anywhere if you're a Christian and defeat him on any ground that he could stand on. When Jesus Christ was here on earth and in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily, all the great uh, powers of God was in his Son, Christ Jesus. For the Scripture tells us that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. All things was delivered unto him, though he spoke nothing but what the Father told him. He healed no one but what he first saw being healed. For he said, Verily I say unto you, 
The son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the father doing. That was St. John 5, 19. St. John 5, 1, he passed by the pool of Bethesda, and there was great multitudes of lame, halt, blind, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. And when the waters would be troubled, then the first person stepping into the water by faith received healing. They had to believe it. And then the virtue of the angel went into the person. They were healed. And then the people waited for another season, maybe a week or two, a month or two. And they laid there great multitudes of people. Jesus passing by here, seen a man not crippled, but with an infirmity for thirty and eight years. And he said, Would thou be made whole? And he said, I have no one to put me in the water. He said, Take up thy bed and go into the house. And the same was the Sabbath day, but the man picked up his bed and obeyed. And when he was questioned in the 19th verse of the same chapter by the Jewish people, the priests of that day, he said, The Son can do nothing in himself but what he sees the Father doing. It's always foreseen what is going to take place by gifts and spirit. It's the revelation of God that's revealed, and therefore you only act and dramatize what you've already seen happen. Many people get it mixed up sometimes about gifts and callings. Gifts and callings are without repentance. God foreordains those things and sends them on the earth and then vindicates them that they are. Here not long ago, a person walked to me, uh, and many times they do, and said, Thus saith the Lord. The Lord said, Do this. If you didn't go to a certain place or a certain thing and do a certain thing, the Lord's going to strike you and take this gift away from you. Now, that isn't true. That isn't true. Gifts and callings are without repentance. There is spirits that's in the church, that's true, such as gifts of prophecy, healing, and so forth, but they're in the entire body. They may fall upon one person tonight, a prophecy, and it might not never fall on that person again. It might be somewhere else in the body. And those spirits are supposed to be judged. Let one speak and two or three judge, said Paul. Now, those are the spirits of the gifts that's in the church. But the only person that has a right to say, Thus saith the Lord, is an vindicated prophet. you never seen anybody judging Isaiah or Jeremiah of those people. They were prophets, foreordained and born in the world to be prophets. And they forestall the thing by vision and then said, Thus saith the Lord, for the Lord had already said it. So what the church needs today is a good old-fashioned teaching of the gospel. That's right, they know where they were. I don't mean just educated teaching. I mean spiritual teaching. Some people speak about God and, and knows nothing of him. You don't. See, you must get down and deal with the actual spirit itself, you see, to know what you're speaking on. And now, Simeon was a man, a great man, led by the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in being led by the Holy Spirit? Certainly. We all do as Christians. Believe that the Holy Spirit leads us. And Simeon was a great man. He was an honorable man, a priest, in late years of 80, as we're told. And he stayed in the temple. And remember, he had a lot of prestige on his name of being a priest or teacher there in, in Israel. But it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he was not going to see death until first he seen Christ. And he was not afraid to make that statement to all the people, no matter what his name was or his prestige was, or his title, the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he was not going to see death until first he seen Christ. Now look, no one had ever seen Christ. He had been spoke of from the very dawn of time, from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And 4,000 years had passed, and every great man had looked for him to come on the earth. The Jewish stream of blood, I guess, is the most pure series on earth tonight, looking for the Messiah to come. And they, they watched for that child to be born. They were looking for it. And so therefore, all of them had looked. But Simeon had a revelation of the Holy Spirit that he was not going to see death until first he saw Christ. 
He was not going to die until he saw Christ, and he told everyone that that's what was going to happen, not afraid that it wouldn't happen. He knew if the Holy Spirit said so, it had to happen. When God tells you anything, it's positive, the truth. You cannot get away from it, and it's got to happen. Someone says, Brother Branham, aren't you afraid you'll make a mistake when you someone comes to the platform that you'll tell them the wrong disease? No, sir. Aren't you afraid? Here the other day there was a man arrested down in the South by telling a man he lived untrue to his wife and so forth and was arrested because it was a story. Well, sure, if it's a story, anything can happen. You're working in yourself. But when you stand under the divine promise of God, there's no fear in God. That's right. It's bound to be. It's perfect. It's never failed, and it will never fail, because God cannot lie. You can only believe God. When he speaks and tells you, then you act upon what he says do. Now, this priest wasn't ashamed to tell the people that he believed that Jesus was, uh, Christ was going to be born, and he would see it before he died. Now notice, when God makes a promise to you, he'll fulfill it. You don't have to be afraid that he will not keep his word, for God will keep his word. Uh, that's true. You just must trust him. And then I notice this. My, when Jesus was born, man, while they didn't have the radio and press as we have today, it just mouth to ear is the way they had to bring message. And eight days later, Mary brought the little uh, child, Jesus, to the temple to do as the custom of the law, to offer turtle doves or, or pigeons if they were poor and uh, so forth, that they was to make the sacrifice and the purification of her. And notice, all this just gets right next to me when I think of it. Now, Simeon, probably out somewhere in the prayer room or outside the temple, and maybe that morning there would probably be 50 children, we'd say, standing in the line for circumcision. But notice, just when Mary brought Jesus in, the Holy Spirit spoke to Simeon somewhere else outside, and he was led by the Holy Spirit right straight to the Christ child. Come in at that very instant. Picked him up in his arms and said, Lord, let your servant depart in peace, for I've seen your salvation. Think of it. Now, he had the promise. And isn't it strange if the Holy Spirit gave him that promise? And when the promise came, the Holy Spirit led Simeon, the one that had the promise, right straight to it. See how he does it? Now, I do not believe there's anyone here. How many people in here sick tonight wants to be prayed for? Let's see your hands over the building. I don't believe you've come to be seen. I don't believe you've come to criticize. I believe you come because you're expecting to be healed. And you believe in healing, don't you? You believe in divine healing. And the very reason that you believe in divine healing, there's something in you that makes you believe in divine healing. And isn't it just the same Holy Spirit tonight? If he promised he would stand in the last days these things, did he promise he would send this in the last days? And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I promise in Mark 16, go ye into all the world. That's New York. See? Preach the gospel to every creature. These signs shall follow them that believe. He promised it. And then he promised the former rain and the latter rain. And we're living now, have been for years, under the latter rain. And just before God cut off relationship with the Jews, he put nine spiritual gifts into the church. And just before the Gentiles' age is over, he's restoring back in the church those nine spiritual gifts, giving the Gentile church its last call before turning again to Israel. And now tonight, while these gifts are promised and you're sick, don't you think that the Holy Spirit led you here tonight just the same as it did Simeon to Jesus when he came? The same Holy Spirit leading the very means of you believing in healing. It shows that there's something back there making you believe in healing. Here, before there is a desire created in your heart, there has to be a creator to create that creation. Isn't that right? 
In other words, like this, before there was a fin on a fish's back, there had to be a water first for him to swim in, or he would not have had any fin. See what I mean? Before there's a tree to grow in the earth, there had to be an earth first for it to grow in, or there would not have been no tree. And if you have a desire in your heart to be healed by divine healing, there's bound to be a fountain of healing somewhere, or that desire wouldn't be in your heart. If there's a desire to worship God, even the Hottentots and Indians, in years gone by, they worshiped objects because the very creation of worship was in their heart and they worshiped something. They worshiped something as their creator. And that showed that there was a creator somewhere to worship a God. If there's a hunger in your heart for more of God, there's bound to be more of God somewhere for you to find. My mother used to have a superstition. The little children, I was at ten of us, and when the little fellows would be, they would get a habit of licking their lips. And she'd say they were tasting for something. And she'd put maybe preserves on, that didn't work. Maybe put a little honey, that didn't work. Maybe some watermelon, that didn't work. But after a while, when she found something that they were tasting for her, why they were, it would stop licking its lips. <laughs> well, that might have been a superstition. But this, when there's a hunger in the heart of a human being for something, there's bound to be something creating that hunger in there. In other words, David said, when the deep calls to the deep. And when there's a deep calling, there's bound to be a deep to respond somewhere. And if there's a deep calling for more of God, for healing, there's bound to be a fountain of healing and the power of God somewhere to respond. Do you believe that? With all my heart, I know it's the truth. And as we call, and there's something in us that tells us as our land beyond the river, I buried a wife and baby some 15 years ago, and standing by the grave, when it looked like everything was around me, my whole family gone. And there was sprinkling flowers upon the little baby's casket that died a few hours after its mother. And my heart was broken. I could not stand seem like any longer. I heard the minister say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and earth to earth. And it seemed like coming down to the trees, there was a breeze come saying, there's a land beyond the river that we call the sweet forever. We only reach that shore by faith degree. One by one we gain the portal there to dwell with the immortal. Someday they'll ring the golden bells for you and me. Something calling out a deep, there's a greater place, a better land. See what I mean? I'm expecting that to be there. I'm expecting God. When I was praying in the room a, a few moments ago before entering the building, it seemed like something come over me that said, Something was going to happen here tonight. A great spontaneous healing. I'm expecting that. God has. I'll eventually say this to you pastors. You'll find out that at least 60 to 80 percent of every sick person in this building will be healed in the next hour. I uh, see. If that isn't right, you can brand me a false prophet. I know what I'm speaking of. That's right. Now, I, I believe it. I prayed. Now, I asked God if he would just move over the people in this service. And somehow, of course, I only get to so many. But I asked the Father if he would just... And when I was praying, something soothed down over me. I knew then that God was going to answer my prayer. I don't know what will happen, but there will be something that will happen that will do it. I want you to constantly be in prayer. Now, notice... When you're expecting something, Simeon was expecting Jesus to come while he was alive. He was expecting it, and God rewarded him for his faith. I'm expecting God to heal at least 60 or 80 percent of the people in here tonight perfectly well before this service is over. I believe it with all my soul. See? I'm expecting it. Daniel was expecting God to deliver him from the lion's den. The Hebrew children, when they went in the fiery furnace, they said, Our God is able. They was expecting God to deliver them. 
and they made the last step of the way before he came, but he's always there at the last end. Jesus comes in the darkest of hours, and Jesus comes along. They was expecting it. The woman with the blood issue was expecting. If she could touch the hem of his garment, it was over. When she touched the hem of his garment, her expectations were fulfilled. If you come tonight expecting to be healed, you're going to be healed. If you come tonight expecting to find something to criticize the meeting, you'll certainly find it. You get what you come for. That's right. Notice, blind Bartimaeus, he was expecting if he could get to Jesus, he, or attract his attention, that he would be healed. So they tried to get him to sit down, but he cried out the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. For he knew if he could ever uh, bring the attention of Jesus to him, that he expected Jesus would heal him. If you're expecting to be healed tonight, you will be healed. Whatever your expectations are, just the thought of my inside life. I'm leaving now, after a bit, to cross over to the other country, and I'm going to tell you just a little thing. There's things that goes along in this, friends, that no one knows about. That's right. I do not tell the people all the things that God would say. Everyone has that in their life. That's your private affair between you and God. But this has been a glorious thing. If I never come back, I feel that God has vindicated and proven that I have told the truth to the nation if I never return again. That's right. He's scientifically proven it, and he's proved it over and over that I have told the truth. That spirit leads. He does things that many times in the room uh, I'll be in there praying and see things in the meeting that's just going to take place and call my managers and things together and tell them of things that's going to happen right in the meeting hours before it ever happens, sometimes weeks before it happens and certain things. Not as I know it, but God shows it to me, and I know it's got to be so. I believe it. Here not long ago in Fort Wayne, we were having a meeting, a glorious meeting there where Paul Rader used to preach, B.E. Rediger, many of you know those national, international known ministers. And I was sitting in the room when they were singing Only Believe in the very room that Paul Rader wrote the song a few months ago. And we were staying at the Indiana Hotel. Many times they don't let the people know where I am. Now that's what's hard to me. I have to pass through people that I know that love me. And I, I just, my heart cries for them. But you, you, there's so many. It just takes the very life. It's, when them vibrations hit the hand here sometime, you watch my brother and them. They watch me. They know when I have enough, they'll grab me and run from the platform. Sometimes, friends, I pass completely out. And they ride me around over the city, maybe for two or three hours, trying to get me to myself. It just depletes my strength so bad. You might think that that's strange. You might think that it's, that it's odd for something like that, a gift. But it pulls from you. It takes away from you. It's not like preaching the gospel or just laying hands on the sick. It's a divine being working through a mortal body. I've had my hand to swell. I'd hold it under hot water for practically an hour to bring feelings back in my hand from the vibration of those hideous cancers and things, how they work. And hardly no one knows those things. My managers and so forth do. But I remember in this meeting, they had found out where I was staying. And the next day, why, it was pathetic to see the people. I remember in one meeting and over another meeting I was at, I had one night service over in Missouri at a quite a large city, and when I left the auditorium, it was small, just about an audience felt like this tonight, and I went up into uh, the third floor, walked from the, from the tabernacle or auditorium up into the third floor of the uh, hotel and just was lying down to sleep just a little bit with my clothes on across the bed. And I was to meet my wife the next day at Poplar Bluff and was have a radio broadcast and going on down into Arkansas. 
And I remember while lying there about 10 minutes, I heard someone knock on the door. And when I went to the door, it was the manager of the hotel. He said, are you Reverend Branham? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, Mr. Branham, you'll have to leave the hotel. Well, I said, what have I done, sir? He said, well, we can't have this around the hotel. And he opened up the door. And friends, there was about a four-lane prayer line come from the door down to, out into the lobby and down into the street of people followed over there. And I looked out there. He said, I said, well, I don't know what to do, sir. He said, you go down the fire escape, and I'll go down and call you a cab. He'll come down through the alley and pick you up. And I went down there, and it was snowing. I looked outside. I seen those little old mothers out there holding things over their babies to keep that snow out of their face, and people on canes, and then with palsy shaking. I just couldn't pass by there. I went on out there on the street and started a prayer line, turned around. Well, the streets began to be crowded, and the Lord healing, throwing down their crutches and things, running away, and the cops was all out there directing the traffic. We had a glorious time out there because of the people believed that they would be healed. Now, at Fort Wayne, they found out where the hotel we were in, the Indiana Hotel. And then in that one night, we started down. We just couldn't get out. You just, just people just so congested. It was terrible. And that we had about three more days to stay. And so the bellhop, my brother hired the bellhop, and he told him which way we go down and go over the, to the furnace room and come out up in the alley. And so it was hard to do. But they taken me down, going to the meetings, and go up and through the alley. Wife and one of Mayo's nurses that was healed with cancer, and she was uh, with us. And so they, um, they t was taking me over for breakfast, and I'd been eating at the little place called Toddle House, I believe it was, and no, Hobbs House. And one morning, we were going down the second morning, I had my overcoat pulled up and, and was walking down the street packing my little girl. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came down. You believe in being led of the Spirit. And I hand the baby over to the wife, and she said, What's the matter, honey? I said, The Holy Spirit's leading me. And I felt the angel of the Lord. You've seen the picture. That just came down. And you just do what it says do. And I start, was going right straight to the Hobbs house. It was about a city block from it. And the Spirit of the Lord said, Turn to your left. And I went down and just kept on walking. They were following me. And I stopped to a place at Miller's Cafeteria. And I went down in the basement, like, where the cafeteria was. And just as I got some prunes, I believe, and some toast and was sitting down to eat, I heard somebody say, Praise the Lord. I looked over, and a lady just raised up the tears running down her cheeks. And Mrs. Morgan, the nurse, said, See, you're caught now. See? And I said, just a moment. The lady walked over. She said, Brother Branham, she said, I followed you meeting after meeting. She said, I have a brother here. His heart's broke through the diaphragm. She said, there's nothing that can be done for him. She said, he can't live a little while longer. She said, we've sold our goods to follow, and we've done everything that we know how to do to get in the line. We've got cards that never was called. And said, our money's gone and everything. She said, we just, just couldn't do nothing. And said, I prayed all night and said, this morning I was kneeling on my knees by the side of the bed at the hotel, and I went to sleep and said, I dreamed that I should come over here to Miller's Cafeteria at 9 o'clock. I looked at my watch it just exactly. Do you believe in being led? That's the Holy Spirit that led Simeon. This is the inside life now. And I said, bring your brother here. Why, in a moment, the Lord had healed him. He was crying and weeping, saying, I never felt like this since a young boy. Went out of the building. I sat down again to eat, and something just lifted me up. I went out. Wife and them followed me. Just as I stepped out the door, I heard someone saying, Oh, thank God. And a little woman dressed in black, she knelt down on the street. She began to cry. And I said, stand up, sister. And she stood up. She said, Brother Branham, she was from Chicago. She said, I've got cancer in the breast. She said, I've tried hard to get to you everywhere. Said, I couldn't do it. And she said, this morning I started to eat, and I was crying because I had to go back home 
and said the Spirit of the Lord said, go stand in front of Miller's cafeteria at 10 minutes after 9. There it was. I met her over here in Arkansas the other day, just shouting. It's been weeks ago. She said that all, everything had disappeared. It had gone. And I started on down the street. I started, my wife said, aren't you going to eat? I said, no, the Spirit of the Lord is leading. And I went on across the street. And it started to go across to the drugstore to get some little coloring books. I had to keep the baby locked up, a little three-year-old girl, in the room all day with us. And so I spent my time in prayer. That's how I know those things, is pray, pray. And as I started to cross the street, something said, stop. I said, oh, my. I turned around. Why said, where are you going? I said, you all go right on to the hotel. He's got something else for me to do. I backed up in the corner to look at some fishing reels. I love to fish and so forth. I backed up there, seen a one look at me, and I turned my head and I said, Father, what would you have me do? And stood there, not just imagine how I heard a voice that go to the corner. I went down to the corner, across the street. And I stood there, and they began to blow the whistle, and the traffic would come across the street, and, and they walked there with the lights, and, and I stood there for about 10 minutes and just kept standing there. After a while, the whistle blowed again, a group of people crossed the street just as busy as they could be. And I noticed coming behind was a lady with a little checkered dress on. She had on a little Canadian tan, and she's carrying a pocketbook over her arm. She walked across the street, and the Spirit of the Lord said, Go near to her. I walked right up to her like that, and she passed by looking down, passed on by me, and I thought, That's strange. Maybe God just did something there, and I didn't know. She walked about 15 feet. She turned back and looked like that. She said, Oh, Brother Branham. And she said, She said, Oh, she began to beat herself. said, Oh, you just know what's happened. I said, What's the matter, sister? She said, I'm from Canada. She said, I spent every penny that I've had. I'm only allowed $150. She said, I got a withered hand. And she said, I slept in a lobby last night and had five cents for coffee this morning. And she said, I was going out here on the road to hitchhike to get back home. A young woman, about 30 years old, she said, I was going down here about two squares, and something said to me, turn this away. Oh, my there it was. I said, stretch me your hand, sister. And there come her hand. And that big Irish cop standing out there looked. He said, I know you, Brother Branham. And here he come running. My group of people there, they had to get a gang to get away. Everybody around a healing service, the Lord working. God leads. Don't you believe that? That's right. You're not long ago coming down out of a meeting. I was going out. This happened in, in this, at the Camden, Arkansas. I was going out of the meeting, and just see how the Lord deals. First, just before I took off my uniform, I was the Indiana State Game Warden three years ago. And just before I took off my uniform, the Lord had called me and appeared to me as the angel of the Lord, as I told you how it happened. And I went out. My little girl was just born. I went out to get her some of them bottle caps for her catnip tea or whatever it was. And I had my $28 check I was going to cash. And I went into, and the bus stopped on Spring Street there at the little city I live. I noticed a strange acting man got off and he looked at me. I went into the drugstore and cashed my check and, and got the bottle caps and come back. And as I started out the street, someone laid their hand on me. And I turned around. He said, Sir, are you an officer? I see. And I said, Yes, sir. I work for the Indiana Conservation. He said, Seeing that you was an officer, I want to ask you a question. I said, Yes, sir. And he said, uh, I better tell you first. He said, I, I've been failing in health for about two years. And the angel had just appeared to me about four or five days before that and told me about this. And he said, or about the gift. And he said, I was... I live in Paducah, Kentucky. He said, last night I had a strange dream. He said, I seen an angel coming down out of heaven. And he came down and told me to come to this city of Jeffersonville and to inquire for somebody by the name of Branham that prayed for me. He said, would you know where there was any such person here or anybody by the name of Branham? Oh, my, my heart just felt like it was that big. And I said, my mother runs a boarding house right around the corner. He said, you're, I said, my mother. He said, is your name Branham? 
I had it in my arms. I said, Brother, come here to the corner. And I began to tell him what happened. And he started weeping, and we knelt there on the street, right there on the street, and I prayed for him. And when I got up, the people holding their children back and taking off their hats and respect there on the street, and God moved down from the heavens and healed him there. And a few weeks later, I was coming out of a building, and I heard somebody hollering, Mercy, mercy, four cops was bringing me out, getting me through the crowd. There was thousands pressing in. And the night before that, the angel of the Lord came right into the building where I was, come down. And there was people there was lame, halt, blind, and everything. I was trying to explain, get the people to believe. And I said, Can't you believe? I said, I've told you the truth. And I said, It's the truth. <laughs> My brother walking by calling time on me. I know I talk too much. That's right, but I love you people, and I, I want to I want to tell you this anyhow. And there was a as I came there to the the place I was talking, telling them about the spirit of the Lord. And just about that time, coming in the front door, here it came. I said I won't have to speak anymore. Here it is itself, and it came right up through the building like that circled around where I was like that, and people blind and deaf and dumb and everything just began raising up and walking through the building, glorifying God. The next day, I was being taken from a, a church where I was speaking by four officers. I started out of the building, and I heard somebody hollering, Mercy, mercy, mercy. And I looked over, standing over out of the crowd was an old blind colored man, little white rim of hair around his head with a cap crying, mercy, mercy. He couldn't stand with the white people, of course. And he was crying like that. And I started, and something moved, said, go over there. And I said, let's go over to where that man is. And he said, the officer said, oh, Brother Branham, you couldn't put your hand on that man. <laughs> They'd arrest you. But you can't do that. You're in Arkansas. I said, well, look, but the Holy Spirit tells me to go over there. I said, you'd start a race ride. I said, you can't do that. This is the South. And I said, I can't help words that. The Lord tells me to go over here. And I, they went with me, and they brought a ring around. And I never will forget, I heard his wife say, Honey, the possum is coming towards you. The possum. <laughs> and so I lived, and I come up to where he was. And he said, Is, is, is this you, possum, Branham? said, Then I feel your face. And he put his old quivering hands over my face. I said, Yes, sir. He said, Possum Branham, can you listen just a moment to my story? I said, yes, sir, go right ahead. And the people just trying to break through, but they were holding their arms, holding the people back. And he said, Parson Branham, said, my old mammy had religion like you got. <laughs> religion like you got. Said, her never told me lie all her life. Said, she's been dead now for 10 years. Said, I've been blind for about eight years. And said, last night, said, I never heard of you in my life. And said, last night, about 8 o'clock, said, I live about 150 miles from here. Said, my old mammy stood right by the side of my bed. And she said, honey child, you go down to Camden, Arkansas, and ask for someone by the name of Possum Brandon. You'll get your sight. Oh, my. I just put my hand up on his poor old dark, wrinkled face. I said, Lord Jesus, I do not understand this, but I ask for his sight in thy name. And as I move my hand down, friends, God will judge me at the judgment bar. And when I move my hand down, tears begin to run down his cheeks. He said, honey, I can see. She said, honey, she began to scream, said, can you see? I said, sure, that's a red car sitting right there. So there stands Possum Branham. And he began screaming like that. And there he was, perfectly well. A few months ago, coming from Dallas, I was grounded by plane. I'll tell you this before leaving. I was grounded by plane at Memphis, Tennessee. I stayed all night. The next morning, they called us and said that the plane will leave at 9 o'clock. And I went down. I was writing some letters back. And I went to the post office, had my grip, and um, I was going down to the post office to mail the letters. And I was going down the street singing that little song that you Pentecost people sing. I'm so glad I can say I'm one of them. Isn't that it? It's about people telling everywhere. I was trying to sing that, you know. And I started across the street and something said, stop. I started again, and I seen it was the Spirit of the Lord. 
I moved back into the corner of a bank. I said, Father, what would you have me do? He said, turn back. I went right down to the hotel and just kept walking, singing to myself. Only believe all things are possible, led of the Spirit. I went way down by the river into some little colored shacks down there in the river. I was going walking down. He said, turn now to your right. I was going down a little hill like this. The beautiful morning, the sun was coming up, flowers just blooming around Memphis. And I was, the sun had just peeping up over the hill, and it had been a rain the night before, and so it was all beautiful there in the south. And I looked hanging out over the gate, and there hung a typical angel mama. She had a, instead of, she had a man's shirt tied around her head. She was looking over the gate. I come walking by going, mm, 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 going down the street looking, wondering where the Lord is leading me. She's looking, tears over a big fat cheek. She said, good morning, Parson. I said, how do you do, Andy? I called me Parson. I looked around and I said, do you know me? She said, yes, sir. And I said, you know my name? She says, no, sir. I said, how'd you know I was a parson? She said, parson, said, did you ever hear about this humanite woman that had a baby while the Lord promised her the baby and the baby died? I said, yes. She said, I was a woman that way. And I promised the Lord that I'd raise my baby for him. And said, the Lord give a husband and I a lovely boy. And said, parson, he took the road that's wrong when he's about a few years ago and said he got a, a dangerous disease, venereal disease, and said it went so long on him we didn't suspect it. And said, and now he's laying in the room dying. Said the doctor has given him all kinds of shots and said he can't get well and said he's been unconscious since yesterday. The doctor was back here and said look for the worst at any time. There was no hope for him. His blood was four plus and nothing could help him at all. And said he's dying. And said I got down on my knees and said I prayed. And said I prayed, oh Lord, said I as a woman like the Shuman, who is your Elisha? And just getting to pray, said, I prayed and prayed. And said, this morning, just before daylight, said, the Lord told her, stand at this gate. And there was her back was wet where she had been standing. She wasn't telling me anything wrong. She said, and look, oh, my. I began to, I walked into the house. There was a great big husky-looking boy. And she had him. He's laying there with a, with a blanket. He's hanging going, mm, mm. Mm, like that. And he's saying, Mammy, it's so dark. Mm. I don't know where I was going, Mammy. Like that. He said, Honey child, do you know Mammy? Honey child. He was, of course, no matter how old you are, you're a mother's child. No matter what you've done, you're still mother's boy. And there she was patting him and loving him. He said, Do you know Mammy? You know your mammy? He didn't seem like he recognized her, just hollered mammy and going on in an unconscious-like condition. And so she said, can we pray, Parson? I said, yes, ma'am. And that old saint got down there and prayed, oh, my, just ring the heart. And I got up and I felt his feet, his cold and sticky death was on him. And then we knelt again and began to pray. And I said, Dear God, I don't know why you sent me down here, but you turned me on the road like that and brought me here. And I know it's past time for the plane. However, the plane was delayed two hours. <laughs> so I said, I don't know why you brought me here, but now in obedience to the leading of the Spirit, I lay my hands upon this boy in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus. He said, Mammy, it's getting light. In a few moments, he was up and on his feet. I passed you there a few months ago. He met me at the aviation station. He said, Brother Brandon, I'm perfectly normal now. It's all gone from me. Well, I'm brother and sister, the very God that led Simeon this year tonight. That's right. He can lead those saints. Hours after hours could I testify. Look. At that same time, there's an old blind prophetess by the name of Anna. Look at her. When Simeon picked up the baby Jesus, led by the Holy Spirit, right to him, 
Don't you believe it's the same Holy Spirit tonight? And look, winding through the crowd came an old blind woman, and making her way through the crowd, no one told her, but she came right straight to where he was, lifted up her hands and blessed God. The Holy Spirit was guiding her through that people. He guides the fish through the trackless waters, the birds through the trackless air. Oh, my, he can guide his people if you'll just let him. We are led of the Spirit of God. We are here expecting God to do something tonight. And I believe that he's here now to do something at this time to heal the sick. Father, we thank thee for thy Spirit and thy love. And I'm expecting you tonight, Father, to move upon the hearts of the people and let them see thy divine program to lead the people. Thou hast called in this day. And I believe, Father, that you're going to bring to pass tonight the thing that you revealed to me, that many of the sick is going to be made well tonight. Grant it, Father. Hear the prayer of your humble servant, for I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. While I go to pray, you pray with me, if you will, and pray for me. The brothers will call the prayer line, and you pray with me. How many will do this for me? Because when I go out, uh, if it anoints me when I come back, I might not be able to say much. But I see, friends, I can't depend on myself. I have to depend on it. I don't say nothing. It does the talking. Now look, when God does something on the platform, all of you believe it. This is nothing but just to show God's attitude. If one time it could be done, ought to prove to you all that Jesus is here to do it. Is that right? Moses was a prophet sent of God. He had two signs to show to the people that he was, he had God's message. And when he performed those two signs, the people believed him. He never had to perform it anymore. The people believed him. And if I come to you like that and ask those things, should not you believe with all your heart? If I could perform the signs that God promised me to do, then you all ought to believe with all your heart. Isn't that right? That is true. Now, even before I go to the platform or away to pray for the people, I want you to believe. Then when you see these things come to pass, I want every one of you to promise me this, that you'll do just what God says do. I've asked him to let this anointed angel which comes to me to move out over this audience and touch one and then the other like that and heal them tonight while the service is going on. I'm going to ask, I've asked him to do that, and I believe that he will do it. I believe it with all my heart. You believe also, and God bless you. Shall we stand to our feet and sing that chorus, Brother Branham's favorite chorus, On the Believe, All Things Are Possible on the Believe.
Let's bow our heads just a moment. Oh, Father, help us now to receive thy beloved Son and his promise, knowing that his Spirit is in our midst tonight. And I ask you that you will heal every sick person in the building. Through Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. How you would be seated, if you will. Everyone be real reverent. And now there might be some strangers that has not heard as yet the operation of the Spirit of God that was delivered this ministry to me. It was given by an angel when I was born. It manifested itself three years ago. It always followed me and made me know that it was near. Then it came to me, it was a man. He's been seen in the meetings many times, big, large man, weigh about 200 pounds, has dark hair to his shoulder, testified when he comes, he said, I'm sent from the presence of God to tell you your birth and life is to indicate that you take a gift of healing to the peoples of the world and begin to tell me different things would happen. I told him that I was uneducated and wasn't able to go. He told me I'd be given two signs. I said, the people will not believe me because I'm not educated sufficient to speak to people. He said, you'll be given two signs, as was the prophet Moses. He said, one sign will be that you're de you'll detect diseases through uh, your hand. When the people contact you, well, you'll be able to tell them what diseases they have through a supernatural discernment. And then said, if you'll be sincere, then it will come to pass that you'll tell the people the secrets of their hearts and the things that they've done in life that might have hindered their healing and so forth. And I said, I'll, I, I'm, they will not believe me that I'll be with you. And I said, I will go. And the light began to gather across the floor. One up, the angel went up with the light, formed a real sacred light, as you see in the picture, and went away. It returns night after night and comes into the meetings. I do not claim, so everyone will be sure to know, I do not claim to be a divine healer. Papers and things call it that, but that's an error. There's no man can heal. Not even Jesus. Jesus didn't claim to be a divine healer. He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. No mortal could claim divine healing then. And then, if he could not claim divine healing, then certainly I would not. No flesh can glory. It comes by the Spirit of God. He's the healer. But uh, it does detect diseases and different things that happens and, uh, and uh, take place in people's lives. Sometimes if there's hurts, why, it calls out and lets them know they're sinners. If they've got secret sin in their life, unconfessed, remember, it'll call it out. And, and it'll tell you about that. And that's the reason then when people come, sometime when they say, come to me without the anointing, they say, oh, I, I, I'm a believer, Brother Branham. I take their word. But under the anointing, you, you feel they're down here. You've got to come up here to this level, say, if I'm illustrating. Here's the gift up here. And you come believing you're up there. That doesn't make you up there. You've got to raise your faith up to here. Then when that faith perfectly believes, the power that's a holding you has to leave. I've never seen it fail. No matter how blind, crippled, lame, or any. Has anybody here been in my meetings before? Let's see your hands. Has been in my meetings. Am I telling the truth? Does that happen if it does hold your hands up? Everybody that comes to the platform, regardless of what's wrong with them, that's right. If their secrets are told, they're, now that I cannot heal, but I do know where they have enough faith to be healed or not. See, that's, that's the thing of up here. But while God is moving up here, he will move down there also. See, 
And just remember, when he does something here, uh, Moses could only perform these miracles, but the people had to believe him. That was the vindication that he was sent of God. You understand? It vindicated his word to be true. If any man says anything and God testifies not that, then the man is wrong. But if the man says something and God testifies behind that, then that man is right. See? Not only once, but over and over and over. It has to be a, a, a time. Now, Moses did that and proved to the people. Now, if, you, if, the, if God answers tonight and proves that what I've said the truth, then you hear my word. God will heal every person in the building. That's it. If you will promise to serve him and believe him. Now remember, then when you leave the building, go testifying that you are healed. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If these people come here, it's not exactly a faith which it is a faith in one way, but their faith has to be built. You go forth testifying that you believe it, and you are healed, and you'll get well. Do you believe that? Just as you testify that you were saved, it works righteousness. Testify you're healed, it works healing, and God will grant it. All right, now let's see. Where are we starting in, in the line? All right, from right here. All right. Hey, everybody, be real reverent. Where you from? New you York. You're from here in the city. Now, if you'll notice the patient, uh, just the spirit of the Lord is here. And the, the patient, I, I do not know her. She's from New York, but a, a real strange feeling. Watch them. When they get about eight or ten feet, you'll see the expression come up on their face. Now, the lady, I do not know her. But you have an odd feeling, don't you, lady? It's very, very odd. Now, it's the audience might know. Would you step just a little closer to the mic? Isn't that the truth? It's the truth. A very odd, strange feeling. It's a sacred. What it is, the light that you've seen in the picture is now here at the platform. You might not be, it might come clear. You might see it. But he's here. I know it's here. Everything seems to be like getting milky around over the building. and it's, I know it's here, you see. The anointing is coming on now. Now, let's see. I want you to be desire to, but you haven't done it. Will you serve him from now on? You promise that? No way I'd know that only through God. Is that right? I see you trying. You even prayed before you come here trying to find favor, didn't you? You were kneeling by the side of a chair recently where there's a little table sitting on the right hand side. Is that right? Trying to find favor. No one knows that, but God, I is that true? And if I, by the Spirit of God, telling you now the same thing, like was told to the woman at the well, when the Master was there, he told her the secret of thing that was keeping her from her liberty. And she said, she accepted him, said, come see a man who told me all things. And his Spirit is here now working through his servant, telling you, you believe that. And I've told you the thing is hindering you. You will accept him now. Will you do that? Shall we bow our heads? Heavenly Father, you're here to make our sister well. Grant, dear God, that you will heal her now, soul and body. May she leave the building now rejoicing. Forgive her, Lord, of every transgression. Granted, Father, that she'll be your child from now on, seeing her persuading to you, seeing that mistake that she made yonder, Father, 
and your spirit able to call it out right here at the platform without demon upon the confession of this woman's faith in the Son of God I come in the name of Jesus Christ professing a gift of divine healing you're made known you can't hide any longer come out of the woman through Jesus Christ You may raise your head. Sister, your sins are forgiven and you're healed now. Straighten yourself up and go off the platform. You're well. Walk real fast. The thing that I want you to notice here on this, Brother Branham discerns this entirely by the Spirit of God. On this card where it says, Are you saved? The lady has the word, No. I want you to notice how the Spirit of God detects exactly what's in the life of each individual. Everyone be real reverend. This is reverend as you can be. Aren't you bring your patient? And everybody be reverend and and just just be faith. Now I want you to do this. I, I just know already that God's going to answer what I asked him tonight. I want you to look this way. I can't hardly tell just who it is, but I want you to look this way and believe with all your heart everything has been said. Yes, the Spirit of the Lord is here now. The lady has her back turned. I have my back turned to her. I want you to walk a little closer, lady, up here to the platform. You. You're a stranger to me. But I can tell you what's wrong with you. Will you accept it as being sent from God? Yes. You've had arthritis, haven't you? Raise up your hands. You're healed. Jesus Christ makes you whole now. Stomp your feet up and down like this. Like this. Up and down. With your feet up and down like this. Now walk off the platform. This is like in you, you and I. Real so on the lady's card is the word arthritis. Everyone believe with all your heart. Now just have faith. Believe. Now that's the way the Spirit of the Lord is sheer. It can detect, discern. Sir, you standing there, you believe with all your heart now. Do you believe me? Do you accept me as God's servant? Do you believe I'm his prophet that was sent here for your purpose? That you might be healed? And will you obey what I tell you to do? Will you do that? If I'll be able to tell you what you want to be prayed for, you have arthritis also, is that right? Raise up your hands like this. Jump up like this, for Jesus Christ makes you well. Amen. Now you can walk across the platform. You're healed, my brother. Straighten yourself up. God bless you, my dear brother. Now, everybody be real reverend. Just keep praying now. Way up in the audience, you just kind of recognize that when they're coming close, sometimes they become into a subconscious condition when they're when they're coming, and therefore they don't uh, they don't realize just exactly until it, he's going along, shaking hands with his friends. Could we say thank the Lord, everybody? On the man's card is the word arthritis. Everyone maybe will understand how the cards are giving out. You see those people are, you've been in the meeting for three nights. What do you think a week or two would happen when people's faith begin to build around? While they walk into the balconies, they come in with wheelchairs, just raise up and jump out of the chairs and run. Or they, they believe, and when they will believe with all their heart, it just draws the strength of the Spirit of God right out to the people. Just right, uh, right to the people. Now, if, the, if you have to believe, you have to have faith. Have, you, how many believes in God? Let's see your hand. You believe in Christ? Believe in the Holy Spirit? Now I want to ask you something. Do you believe that I've told you the truth? At, at, see, if you do that, that's what brings the blessing. He said, if you get the people to believe you, 
believe you. Be sincere when you pray. Nothing shall stand before the prayer. Now remember, I cannot heal. It only tells what happens when the people are standing. They, they begin to look, and, and they are wondering. And, and then when the Spirit begins to speak to them and tell them what their disease and afflictions are, why their faith just moves right up and the thing leaves them. Now, if I'm able to tell that the what's on you and what's done it by the Spirit of God, then I know when it's leaving, like if Moses could foretell what was going to happen and it come to pass, we believe that the creation was according to his word, Don't, do we not? Because it's God speaking both ways. All right? Now, I want all to pray and be real reverent everywhere over the building, wherever you are, everyone be reverent. But now you pray. You don't bow your head till I ask you, you or you can bring your patient, brother. Now, everyone be just as reverent. And I still feel tonight that something glor Now, sometime when the Spirit of the Lord gets real near, why, uh, it's, I uh, lose track of what I'm saying, is he? But now, just to notice right now, I, if I can try to tell you, it's beginning to move down now for this patient. I do not know the lady, know nothing about her. I just a moment, when it, it contacts, it's on me now. Now when I get a hold, come close. Down. She's deaf, all right. Everyone bow your head, everywhere now. Our Heavenly Father, who brought again Jesus from the dead, as I are here to heal our sister and to declare your divine power. And we've made boldly the statement that nothing could stand before the gift of God, that what would be told in the woman seemingly has faith. And I ask thee to deliver her tonight from this affliction that Satan has placed upon her that she might be a testimony in her community of the healing power of God, that her testimony might start an old-fashioned revival. Grant it, Lord. Thou, deaf spirit, who's come upon the woman, I adjure thee by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, leave the woman, come out of her. fingers in her ear. You hear me? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hear me now? Yes. Amen. Amen. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Your eyes have been bothering you. You've been feeling weak lately, have you? Real weak. And of the evening, especially in the afternoon, I waited till you got your hearing so that you would know. In the afternoons, late, you get real weak. And at night, not uh, your, uh, you have a restless night. And now what that has been, you have been afflicted with two burglars, sister. I picked it up on the vibrations, but it's all gone now. You're healed. Your hearing is true. You're perfectly normal. You can remove your glasses and go on off the platform. All right, bring your Everybody, say thank Jesus. Deafness and glaucoma of the eyes. I want you to look this way just a moment. You've been extremely nervous <laughs> all your life. And another thing is 
strong than you do now. Of course, your eyes has caused you trouble from the stigmatism which came out when you was a child. You had trouble in school. Isn't that right? Yeah. I see you sitting at a desk winning trying to remember when you was a little girl. This certain day when a certain thing happens to you there, wearing a leash that you read in that now, when you, when you now also are suffering with the peptic ulcer of your stomach, which is called you have stomach trouble, isn't that right? Now, a real strange feeling is up on you, isn't that right? Sister, dear, Jesus Christ makes you whole. You remove your glasses, go home, eat what you want to for your healing. stomach trouble and eye trouble. Notice they're getting their healing now without prayer. With all your heart, that you, you're trying to be dear woman weary. That's why I'm changing. You've been deeply depressed. You've been having troubles. So, you know what I'm speaking of. I won't say it. Or may I have your hand? There's something else. Oh, it's a cancer sister. That's too bad, but do you believe that Jesus Christ will heal you and will make you well? I so that you have had troubles and trials. Of course, now that strange feeling upon you, that's the Spirit of the Lord. I want you to look at here so that you will have more faith to believe. Here's how, what I call a vibration. Come close. I want you to notice my hand there. I want you to look how it looks. See how and how black looking it turns and how it keeps the little white things running over there. I'm going to take your hand off and I'm going to put my hand up on. Now it's not there now, is it? Looks like anyone else's hand. I'll put this hand here up on it. Looks just as normal, does it? But Reverend Lindsay, would you come forward? I'll put Reverend Lindsay's hands up on it. Just normal, like. I'll put my own hand. It's normal. I watch I'll take up this hand right here and lay it up on there. Now look at it. See that swells, turns real red looking, bloodshotty, and them little white things. That's your cancer, sister. That's the life of a demon that's trying to take your life. And it's moving through here. Now that feels perfect all my wrists and arms. See? It moves right on up to my heart. And that's what does that. I want you to watch my hand. And now, if that remains that way, your life is very sharp. If it moves, you're having faith. I've been, been expecting it to leave at any time, but so far it hasn't. But you're, you suffer with, with the dizzy spells also, which is caused from a high blood pressure. And, and another thing is the time your nervousness is what causes menopause, change of life, or is that right? We had children too. Uh, I want, I want you. Yes, I want you to believe me with all your heart. Now, in order to vindicate what I'm telling you to be true, I want you to watch my hand. And if it stops by, I want you to take this other hand and feel those little things as they're moving over my hand and feet. That's, a, that's the life of that cancer. It moves through, kind of, kind of feels like it's going. Now, if that stops, I want you to see it. Now, the Bible says in the mouth of two or more witnesses, let every word be established. Is that true? You're Christian, and I, and you believe, and you come now, and you're a stranger. I've told you what's the matter with you and what's happened in your life. Is that true? That's a witness, isn't it? You're looking here at something supernatural happening on my hand. Is that right? That's two witnesses. If it remains, it's three. If it leaves, it's three. But this determines whether you'll be well or not. Now, there, there's nothing else that God could do to cause you to believe. Isn't that right? Now, I want all the audience to bow their head while the patient watches my hand. Our 
Heavenly Father, we're thinking of the time that Nathaniel came to you. Philip went and got him, and when he came up to Nathaniel, he found him praying, and he said to Nathaniel, Come see who I found, Jesus of Nazareth, who was spoke of by Moses, the prophet. He said, Could anything good come out of Nazareth? He said, Come and see. And when he came to the prayer line, oh God, we can see the Spirit of God move Jesus. He said, there's a Christian, there's a believer, an Israelite indeed otherwise. And Nathaniel said, when did you know me? He said, before you come, you were praying under a tree. And he said, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel. Oh, you promised that your spirit would be with us always even to the end of the world. And you're here tonight to detect, to tell, and to heal through faith. And Father, we're so thankful that you said a little while and the world will see me no more. Yet you'll see me, or I'll be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. How thankful we are that you're here in New York with us tonight in this auditorium. And this is our sister who's prayed and a Christian. And we're taught that all things work together for good to them that love you. And Father, I've spoke to her everything that you've put in my mouth. And I'm expecting you to heal her. Won't you grant it, Lord, before she... challenge as she's watching my hand. Thou art demon, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave the woman. Of course, you see it didn't do it. It started right there. Thy blessings, O oh God, upon this morning. Granted, Father. what has happened, don't you, sister? The lady's healed.
Now the lady is standing here looking herself. She's a New York woman. I've never moved my hand. Just as normal as any man's hand, isn't it? It just went away, just vanished away. Now this, there's three witnesses and the Holy Spirit speaking through the church witness that it was sent. Now there's no, there you go. Your healing's over, sister. God bless you. You may go home. Let's just bow our head and offer thanks. Bring your patient, if you will. Father, I pray thee to be merciful. Let thy people see, dear Father, thy works and know thee. Through Jesus Christ, I pray this blessing. Amen. On the lady's card was the word cancer for three years. All right, you may, you see what's happened to her. The garter went right from her throat. Uh, God bless you. I want to ask you something. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. The people don't have to come up here to platform to be healed. They can be healed anywhere in the building. Now, just because those people had prayer cards and come up, see, we give out 50 cards or 100 cards, and then we come to the meeting, they just mix those cards together from one to 50 or four. Then we had a time that the people just rally. If they couldn't get number one card, they didn't want to come. And if they didn't get somewhere within 15 or 20 where we'd reach in a night, they didn't want no card. So we had to mix the cards up. And then they would ask, what number were we going to start with? So instead of that, we just let them get together, give the cards out and select a number some work in that group and then call and pray for as many as we can through the night. Now that's that's the way that we have found more successful and operating and the people come to the platform, the only good it does to come to the platform is just to have their self is to be stand here that it might you don't have to come for that. Well God can reveal right here now the secret of every heart in this building. And I know this one thing. There's a great, great group of people here that believe. There seems to be a pressure coming from everywhere. God can do all things. All things are possible to them that believe. Is that right? Yes, sir. Now, he can, he can speak out there. But now, look, if he has verified this to be the truth, do you believe it is the truth? It's the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, if I never see you again, I've told you the truth. And now God will heal and will heal everybody here if you'll just believe it. And I've asked him to do that tonight. And I, I believe God. I believe that he's going to do what I've asked him to do. For I, I think what if that was my mother, father, or brother, or my child, or whatever it was, sitting out there or sick. Uh, there was a little girl just looked this way, just saying a sweet little thing. She was, her little vibrations moved up. As it was, she's sitting here, a little black-headed girl. Sweetheart. Stand on your feet. I don't look at you. Just look here. Yes, stand up. Look up this way, honey. You've been wanting that child to get in the prayer line, haven't you, sister? If 
defied by the Spirit of God can tell you what's wrong with that child, will you accept me as God's servant? The child's got a growth in his throat. Is that right? It's been bothering. It's something in his throat. It's been bothering. Is that right, honey? Swallow and put your hand on your throat. Jesus Christ heals you now. God bless you. Is that true, my love? God knows all about all things. Here sits a man sitting before me here with a cane in his hand. Brother dear, do you believe me? Look this way. You've been suffering with a heart trouble, haven't you? Lay that cane down and go on out of the building. You're healed, sir. You don't need it. Do you all believe Jesus Christ? I want you to look this way. It's, God knows all your heart. Here sits a lady sitting here with a red waist on. Look this away, sister. Seem like you're in trouble. Your husband's sitting there holding you, your loved one. Looky here. You're suffering. You've had some trouble recently, haven't you? You've been to a clinic or a hospital, yet you've had an operation, haven't you? You was the Mayo Brothers. Is that right? I can see the institution. It's happening between you and I. It's a gallbladder operation, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? You're worrying about it because you're weak. Stand on your feet. Jesus Christ makes you whole now. You're Don't have no fear. Everybody believes. That's right. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. He's sure he knows all things. Do you believe it? Here. There's a poor old colored lady sitting there with a black hat on. Stand on your feet. You was deaf, woman. You can hear now. Jesus Christ makes you whole. You was deaf. Is that right? You hear all right now? Can you hear me? Sure, you're healed. Jesus Christ makes you. Why, he'll heal everybody in the building right now. Do you believe it? Stand up a minute. Raise up your hands. Let's pray up in the balcony. You there that had the cancer, you're well. Jesus Christ healed you. You standing there that's been crippled, stand up out of that chair. Jesus Christ makes you a whole. You. Right here, that man there. Yes, sir, brother. Jesus Christ heals you right now. That's right. You who come from that place. That there, sitting right there in the balcony. That girl, and right there, there's the cross eye. It's over. Look and see. Your eyes are straight. Oh, he's here, friends. He's making whole this minute. Everyone, let's lift up our hands and our voices to give praise to the Lord Jesus. Now I rebuke every power doubt every demon spirit that he'll turn this audience loose at this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. You in the chairs, raise up. You that sick, you're well. Almighty God, I commit this to you. what you promised, I now ask for a complete deliverance of every sick person in the building in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Accept it. Believe it. Right now, I feel the pressure that there's hundreds of people right now has been healed. If I've told you the truth, I'm telling you the truth. Now, God has verified. 